Hi, this is Mike. I'm an adventure and a dad, and today I'm going to show you the ultralight minimalist drawer system I built in my third gen Toyota Tacoma here. But first, it's a little bit cold. I think I need a hot drink. All right, that's much better. First of all, what makes this a minimalist drawer system? Well, first of all, it's really simple construction. There's no fancy connectors, there's no hidden features, there's no fancy locks or anything. It's uh, just some simple plywood uh, boxes for the drawers and a simple plywood deck. There's no, there's no power, there's no electricity, there's no wiring, there's no none of that, there's no batteries. It's just literally just, just plywood. So what makes it lightweight? Well, it's the construction technique that I used. Uh, I used as little plywood as possible. The top plate ties into the rails on the side of the bed, the factory uh, T-slot rails. Instead of using um, a, a plywood uprights and a plywood bottom, it just has a top and one single support in the middle. The top is three quarter inch plywood, and it's just a simple uh, cheap indoor outdoor carpet um, on the top there. The drawers are all half inch plywood uh, screwed together with pocket hole screws with just a couple of dividers inside them. There's no uh, heavy locking 300 pound drawer slides on the side that would add weight and also take up uh, space, storage space, um, that I really is at a premium in the truck this size. So how light is it? Well, this whole setup including the drawers and the top deck and all the hardware is 114 pounds. Now, if you were to compare that to other systems, similar systems that you could purchase, um, you know, you'd be starting at like 150 pounds for some of them, closer to 200 pounds for others. And the, one of the heaviest ones that I've seen is actually the deck system, which for this truck weighs 250 pounds. So this is quite a bit lighter when compared to comparable off the shelf systems, less than half the weight when compared to the heaviest options. And if you see a lot of the construction techniques that people use when they're building these um, themselves, like I did, they'll use three quarter inch plywood on the top and on the bottom and on both sides. And so based on this technique, this weighs about half what that would weigh. So the drawers here are made with half inch plywood and they're screwed together with pocket holes. Now on this one, uh, I put the pocket holes here in the front because this panel comes down and the bottom panel is uh, comes all the way to the end. On this one, I didn't want to see the pocket holes, so I screwed it in that way. The reason the pocket holes go from the outside to the inside is they angle as they go in. So if they were to go from the inside to the outside, then that uh, screw head would be really close to the edge of the panel that they're screwing into, and that would be a lot less secure. These finger holes I just drill with a one inch Forstner bit and then sand it out. It's really simple and really easy, comfortable, and I think it looked really cool too. The drawers here slide on a three quarter inch strips of plywood that I've glued down inside these channels here. It raises it up over these bolts that hold the um, bed to the chassis. Um, and that's what prevents me from having them actually slide on the deck, which is what my original plan was. But this works pretty well. And it's a lot lighter than uh, a side slide. These drawers are held in place when we're moving by a couple of pins in the side. So this is a, a cotterless, it's called a cotterless pin. It's got a little detent and a ball here and a spring on the end. Um, and that stays in and holds the drawer from sliding back and forth while we're in motion. The drawers then simply slide out and as they get to the end of the travel, they'll rest on the bed here. And I can actually slide them all the way out and cantilever them here. And as long as they don't um, come past that edge, they won't fall off. Let me show you what I've got inside these. So inside this drawer, I didn't want a bunch of dividers in the in any of the drawers really. So what I ended up doing was I took a couple of off cuts of the half inch plywood pocket hole screwed them into this, but I didn't use any glue. So if I want to move this around, I can totally move it around. In this one, I have sort of the everyday stuff, the stuff that I need most frequently. I've got a first aid kit here. I've got a little bag of grocery bags to use for trash, uh, face masks, obviously, because that's 
the time we live in. This is just a little kite, a little parafoil kite that I've had for years, and it's just end up, it just ended up in here after our last trip. Garbage bags. And then this is a, a little basket. I've got several of these baskets stashed around the, the truck. And in this one, I've got a pair of work gloves, uh, some rubber gloves, another pair of work gloves. I've got a flashlight, a bunch of bungee cords and tie downs, sort of everyday stuff that I might need in the truck. In the next compartment here, I've got chairs. I've got two adult sized chairs and two kid sized chairs, and then just sort of odds and ends, things we might need, a Frisbee, a machete, a blanket. And then all the way in the back, I've got another container. I've got another divider and behind that are tools. So all the heavy stuff is all the way at that end, closer to the center line of the truck um, and also helps cantilever this when I pull it all the way out, which I can do. In this one, I've got some more uh, camping stuff. In the front here, I've got a little, another divider here with a small compartment. In this compartment, I've got a couple of books. This is a little camping dinner set from REI, it's pretty handy. Um, and then it's got room for us, a little cooler. Here I've got my kitchen tools bag from Blue Ridge Overland Gear, and I've got a little hook, and so that can hook somewhere. And then here I wanted more compartments, but I didn't necessarily want to cut this up with permanent dividers. So these are little plastic bins that you get at Target. They're sold in the housewares department, and they're actually for uh, bathrooms. It's like a bathroom organizer kit. But it's plastic, the sides are straight, it's very thin. They seem to be flexible and durable. I haven't broken one yet, but they, they're really nice. They come in this size, they come in a bigger size with handles on the side, and then they come in this small size that uh, is stackable. So we have, I have treats and snacks here. This is stuff for bike rides and hikes, and then some uh, emergency Pop-Tarts just in case, stuff like that. Now to keep these in place, like I didn't want permanent dividers here, I wanted one big long drawer. So I installed some of these cargo tie downs and I have a bungee cord here. If I take these out and I wanna put like my all my camera gear in here, I can fit lights and a camera bag and tripods, then I could just pull this bungee cord, stash it over here, and then these will flip down and let me use this as one big compartment. Here I've got one of the front runner cub boxes. These are the smaller of the boxes. It'll fit here sideways like this. The wolf packs will also fit in here the other way without the lids. And then in the back here, I've just got my uh, go bag. And that either lives in this compartment in the back here, or it'll get stashed up here somewhere if I've got other things in here. Um, but it's very handy. It's very nice to have this drawer. Over here on the sides, I have little bits of uh, space that I can stash stuff into. Um, on this side, I've got one of these cheap horse blankets. I've got a bunch of these, and I use them for ground cloths. We need to sit down, we need to stand a uh, change when we're going for a bike ride, or they make a good doormat for a tent or a rooftop tent. And the other thing that I have in here is the poo pocket. So that brings us to the outdoor ethics discussion for the day. If you've been logging a bunch of miles on the road or the trail, eventually you're gonna to have to stop and release the brown trout. So here are three easy things to remember about when you have to poop in the backcountry. Number one, always drop a deuce at least 200 feet away from trails, campgrounds, day use areas, and especially water. Always dig a hole and bury your turtle heads at least six inches deep. Never leave the wrappers for your butt burritos lying on the ground. Always bag your paper and throw it away properly. Plan for it now while you're getting organized and it won't be a big deal when you find yourself in the middle of nowhere on a mission to free the chocolate hostage. If you wanna learn more about this topic, I suggest you read this book, How to Shit in the Woods, the fourth edition by Kathleen Meyer. It's easy enough to grab this stuff and put it back. It's very handy to have it there and it's out of the way um, and it doesn't fall out. Just a quick note about the topper that I have on the truck. This is a Snug Top GB Sport, and uh, it came with the vehicle when I bought it used last year. I really like some things about this top. I love the way it looks. The window here sort of matches the window on the truck. Um, it's very sleek and low profile. 
This particular model is what they call the sportsman's package. So it's got extra fiberglass, it's reinforced. It's rated to carry 500 pounds. Uh, this one came with the roof rails. It actually came with the, the um, crossbars as well when I purchased it. Um, the whole system is, is just really nice and it fits the truck perfectly and it's really uh, great. Things I don't particularly like about it, because it's really low profile, the access is, is limited. And so there's only so much space between the deck and the top. And so I made the deck a little bit lower to account for the fact that the, the back end curves around a lot before the window starts. But other than that, it's really great and I like it a lot. So in order to save weight, I didn't want plywood on the sides. So in the back, the drawer is held in place by the wheel well, and on the front, the drawer is held in place by a couple of aluminum angle brackets that I have mounted on the side here and screwed to the bottom. The way this whole deck is held in place is with steel angle brackets. There are two on each side of each panel and one in the back, and that actually holds this deck, even without the center support, holds this deck extremely securely. If all you wanted was a deck, tying them into that rail would be a really good way to do it, an easy way to do it and frankly a secure way to do it because once it's in it's really hard to get out. The one thing that you will need to add from stock for most of these is the, is the rear channel. I think it's a good idea to add one extra bracket in the back in the center to help keep everything stable and, and straight. It also adds support for the center in the back. This top deck is actually two separate panels that are 28 inches by 56 inches. To keep those sort of locked together I have two uh, cargo tie downs and the saddle clamp on those tie downs bridges the gap between those two panels. It also adds another place for me to strap gear down and I have a, a bungee in here to keep things from sliding to the back like when I put my camera gear in there it doesn't go slamming against the front or back of the bed. The carpet you see here is a simple $18 indoor outdoor area rug that you can get from Home Depot. It comes in Toyota gray and it also comes in third gen Forerunner tan, if you have one of those, which I do. Here on this side, I've installed this wire basket, which is, uh, I can't remember the brand, I'll put a link to it, but it comes from Amazon, and I've got these sort of all over the house and the trailer. It's a very handy, durable way to store things. So it lets me store uh, paper towels, which are very handy to have, and uh, sunblock for this season. I've also been keeping this rag here, which is handy for drying things off. And then to keep things separate, I've just got some little bungees sort of dividing that. Now that sits on a piece of just simple one by uh, board that I got from Home Depot, and that's bolted through uh, the bolts that hold the topper down to the T-slot the tracks in the truck. This is very handy to have. It's very sturdy. Things don't fall out of it. Um, but it's super handy, particularly for the sunblock. The sunblock's just always there. We stop, we open the back, we get our helmets on, sunblock up, and go. Very handy. So some other sort of general organizational stuff that I have in here that I may as well show you while, while it's in here, because this whole system sort of is, is one big system that all works together, and all little pieces are great, but in aggregate, it lets me keep everything super organized and stashed and not bouncing around back here. Um, so one of the things that's really handy is in this, in this topper, I've installed a number of these, uh, they're rock climbing bolt hangers that I ordered like a 10 or 15 pack off of Amazon. And I've got them installed along the bolts that mount the topper to the truck on this side. And then above here, which you can't see, I have some of them installed on the bolts that hold the, the roof rack to the topper. And so that lets me, um, over here I've strung up some paracord and I can slide items back there along the window and those can stay there out of the main area. And then up here I have a bunch of bungee cords and that lets me stash stuff up there, whether it be long items or uh, I've got, in the summertime, I've always got my big sun hat up there. That just lives up there when I need it. Um, other items, I could put ski poles up there, I could put skis up there, I've stashed skateboards up there in the past as well. Um, it just ends up being a really handy way to store stuff and have that available. I don't always use it, but when I do, it's very handy. If you want a complete guide on how to build one of these for yourself, there's a link in the description for that. Well, thanks for checking out this minimalist ultralight 
overlanding drawer system I built for my Toyota Tacoma. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you want to see more videos like this, definitely you should subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy trails.